Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. Good morning, everybody. In this morning's Mass, the Church honors the life of St. Dominic. He was born in Spain about the year 1180. He became a priest, but he noticed that the priests around him were preaching in a very ineffective way. They seemed to be more concerned about wealth and honor and privilege. So he formed together a community of men living a radically simple lifestyle, going to the people and sharing the fruits of their contemplation and study. He formed a community called the Order of Preachers, otherwise known as the Dominicans. We honor him today as we praise God in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us seek the Lord's mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us all, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us continue our prayer. May St. Dominic come to the help of your church by his merits and teaching, O Lord, and may he, who was an outstanding preacher of your truth, be a devout intercessor on our behalf through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> a reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. On the fifth day of the fourth month of the fifth year, that is, of King Jehoash's exile, the word of the Lord came to the priest Ezekiel, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Kibar. There the hand of the Lord came upon me. As I looked, a storm wind came from the north, a huge cloud with flashing fire enveloped in brightness, from the mist of which, the mist of the fire, something gleamed like a lectrum. Within it were figures resembling, resembling four living creatures that looked like this. Their form was human. Then I heard the sound of their wings like the roaring of mighty waters, like the voice of the Almighty. When they moved, the sound of the tumult was like the din of an army. And when they stood still, they lowered their wings. Above the firmament over their heads, something like a throne could be seen, looking like sapphire. Upon it was seated above one who had the appearance of a man. Upward from what resembled his waist, I saw what gleamed like a lectrum. Downward from what resembled his waist, I saw what looked like fire. He was surrounded with splendor. 
like the bow which appears in the clouds on a rainy day was the splendor that surrounds him. Such was the vision of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Heaven and an earth are filled with your glory. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you his angels. Praise him, all you his hosts. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Let the kings of the earths and all peoples, the princes and all the judges of the earth, young men too, and maidens, old men and boys, Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. And he has lifted up the horn of his people. Be this his praise from all his faithful ones, from the children of Israel, the people close to him. Alleluia. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. As Jesus and his disciples were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is to be handed over to men, and they will kill him, and he will be raised on the third day. And they were overwhelmed with grief. When they came to Capernaum, the collectors of the temple tax approached Peter and said, Does not your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he said. When he came into the house, before he had time to speak, Jesus asked him, What is your opinion, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth take tolls or census tax? From their subjects or from foreigners? When he said, from foreigners, Jesus said to him, Then the subjects are exempt, but that we may not offend them, go to the sea, drop in a hook, and take the first fish that comes up. Open its mouth, and you will find a coin worth twice the temple tax. Give that to them, for me and for you. The Gospel of the Lord. One of my all-time favorite oldies but goldies movies is The Wizard of Oz. I love that movie. The story of people whose lives are incomplete. Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the Tinsman, the Lion. They're making a journey to Oz because they heard that the only one that can take care of them is the great and wonderful Wizard of Oz. And then they ask, well, what's this wizard like? And they're told, oh, he's very mysterious and very powerful. That's all. Nothing prepares them for stepping into that throne room and seeing this head floating above the throne with this angry expression, columns of fire shooting up, smoke, peals of thunder, and they're quaking, they're shaking, they're so scared. But then the second time they go to the throne room, Toto pulls back the curtain, and there's Oz, an ordinary man, who 
pushing buttons, flipping levers, and creating the illusion of the great and powerful wizard. And they're left wondering, can he really satisfy our wishes? Can he really take care of what we need? God pulls back the curtain today and he shows us what he's like. The vision of Ezekiel is unlike anything else in the Bible. Powerful, overwhelming, and it seems to defy imagination. You would need a a George Lucas or a Steven Spielberg to put this on film in order to fully appreciate what Ezekiel saw. And as great as the vision is, he was probably overwhelmed by the fact that here he was, an exile, in a foreign land, and here's God. He never expected it. The belief was that the glory of God only stayed in the temple, that God was limited to the boundaries of Judah. But here he was in Babylon, a great and powerful empire, magnificent buildings, wealth, power. And yet here was one that was even greater, more powerful. He's overwhelmed by this vision. In fact, throughout his life as a prophet, it never leaves him. This image of God's glory is overwhelming. His beauty, his light, his sovereignty. But Ezekiel needed to see that in order to understand God is not limited by boundaries or buildings. He made a covenant with his people. And even though they were unfaithful, he remains faithful. So not only is God present in a foreign land, speaking through a prophet to restore hope, he's still in Judah speaking through the prophet Jeremiah, trying to call the people back to himself. The curtain is pulled back, and the prophet sees and shares that glory of God that gives him strength to speak no matter what. Centuries pass, and the curtain is pulled back again. No flashy signs, no great wonders, but what seems to be an ordinary man walking through Galilee, preaching the kingdom, healing the sick, casting out devils. Someone that you could actually see and hear and touch. Fully human, except in sin. And for those coming to faith, the Messiah, the Savior. Nothing to fear here. But everything that would satisfy the human heart is being given. He'll die on a cross, a criminal, but be raised to glory three days later and becoming the source of salvation for all who call upon him. God reveals what he's like. God comes to a people, wherever they might be, in order to offer them life, forgiveness, and salvation. It's a tremendous gift. It speaks of the faithfulness of God, his love and devotion to every single one of us. But once that appearance is made, Once you are aware of his presence, what are you going to do? How are you going to live? Ezekiel had this courage to speak the truth. Do we? 
the apostles, after the gift of the Spirit, will risk everything because they've seen the Christ. Do we? God has pulled back the curtain and he's told us, he's shown us what he's like. Is that enough to live as a people of faith, as the church, proclaiming, living, and giving everything to his glory? Let us gather together our prayers and entrust them to our Father in heaven. That on this feast of St. Dominic, the Holy Spirit will continue to bless and enrich the Dominican order to fulfill the vision of its founder. We pray to the Lord. That our world will finally come to know the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. For all those who are struggling during these economic times, that God will give them hope and consolation, we pray to the Lord. For the needs and the intentions of the members of the Little Flower Society and all the benefactors of the Calm Light Order, we pray to the Lord. For Carazan Barroso, Pancho Digon, and all the dead, we pray to the Lord for our needs and those we have promised to pray for. We pray to the Lord. Only you, Lord, can satisfy the restlessness and the emptiness of our hearts. Come quickly then, give answer to our prayers according to your will, as we make them known in the name of Jesus, who is Lord and Savior forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, the eagerness we have bread to offer, the fruit of the earth, the work of many human hands. Let this become for us the bread of life. Yes. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, the eagerness we have wine to offer, the fruit of the vine, the work of many human hands. Let this become for us our spiritual drink. Pray with me, brothers and sisters, that my sacrificing yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Attend mercifully to the prayers we offer you, O Lord, by the intercession of Saint Dominic, and through the great power of this sacrifice, strengthened by the protection of your grace, those who champion the faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness 
and bring it to experience on this earth, the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are filled with your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy these gifts by sending your spirit down upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new, the eternal covenant, that will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection till you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Ronald our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles, St. Dominic, St. Therese, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share that peace with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who has taken away the sins of the world. Blessed are the people gathered to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. 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 Amen. The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ.
Let us pray. May your church, O Lord, receive with wholehearted reverence the power of this heavenly sacrament by which we have been nourished on the commemoration of St. Dominic. And may your church, having flourished by means of his preaching, be helped through his intercession, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God always bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass ascended. We go to love and serve the Lord Jesus and one another. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, for vanished children of Eve. To thee do we stamp our sighs, valley of tears. Turn our most gracious advocate, the nice of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, most holy Mother of God. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, St. Dominic, St. Therese, hope all of you have a good day today.